Hello, my name is Ian Cartover. Welcome to The Current Buzz. Uh, today we have a gentleman named Grant Walter. Walker. I'm sorry. You uh, got it eventually. Yeah, I know. God, I should know it. I read your book. Yeah, that's all right. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, we haven't yeah, talked in a while. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, it's been a couple of years, in fact. I've been trying to get you out here I know. for a I, while. It's been so long since I've been in Chelmsford. I had to look up directions to remember how to get here no from, kidding. from and You were the Sun reporter for Chelmsford, weren't you? Yeah, for a few years. Yeah, but me. I was thinking about it. It's been more than four years now since I've covered Chelmsford. So your memory goes away pretty quick. I, for, I forgot how to get here. There's an ice cream stand just down the road. I know. I remember. I forgot about that until <laughs> I went by. I wish the weather was nicer. I yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. yeah, so he's the news editor for the um, Worcester Business Journal. Explain what you do at the Business Journal. I mean, we don't have that in this area, I don't believe, right? No, there's so. nothing for that in, in Lowell. But, you know, we cover Worcester County and Metro West. So it's a, it's a big area. It's about a million right. people in all. And uh, we cover higher ed, health, manufacturing, economic development, retail, a little bit of everything going on in that area. You cover Leicester, Massachusetts. We do well, cover Leicester. Yeah, you may have heard of it recently. Yeah, recently in the press. Uh, yeah. uh, tell us about it. Have you covered it in your... I haven't covered it as much myself. Okay. The, you, you know, the medical, mar our legal marijuana yeah. uh, industry. No, we, we've covered that at, at the Business Journal, and, and Leicester is right next door to Worcester. Yeah, I know. That's and, why I brought uh, and, it up. And Cultivate, yeah, is... Yeah. Uh, is is has been crazy with with the lines. I haven't been able to get out there myself, but I've seen pictures and, and read the stories. And uh, just last night, the town of Leicester had a an emergency meeting, basically to sort of uh, address the issue of so much traffic. Right. It's a small town that's not of used 10, to having all that. people. I mean. Yeah, and they're and they're just having lines way out the door all day, every day. Right. Right. And um, that just shows that you know it, it was like a two year process, I think, to get to this point of how long ago Massachusetts voters approved legal marijuana and, 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 and you had to get up the whole legislative process and, and get the system in place, testing and whatnot. And uh, now that it's up, it's like it just made people anxious just waiting. It, it built up this uh, this desire for people to go and... and Le Lester is uh, next to, uh, you have six universities or colleges in there's Worcester, There's more right? than that. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a lot. So uh, they're right nearby, Lester. They sure are. I hate to tell the parents, but, you know. Uh, they, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whether it's college oh, you have students to be or legal. anybody else. No, you have to be 21. That's right. That's, yes. That's right. You I'm do, sorry. Don't you? So yeah. College students are out. Yeah, please. most of them are out. But um, uh, it's fun. It, we see people coming from all across the area, all across the region, because it's the first East Coast right. legal marijuana stores. The first stores. place uh, east of the Mississippi. Yeah, that's it's right. Legalized. Yeah, so people are coming from all over uh, right. to get their right. first legal weed. I, I, I wanted to get you here two years ago because you wrote a book, right? And it's called We Are Market Basket. And this is the book right here. Um, I read it a long time ago. Yeah. I haven't read it recently. It feels like a long time yeah, ago already. Yeah, I know. It does, doesn't yeah. it? It happened in uh, uh, Market Basket it's Strike went on 2014. That's right. Yeah, yeah. summer of 2014. And um, so tell us what's going on with the book. Uh, I mean... I understand sure. that in some business schools or business classes, they're reading the book or did yeah, read some the book? Have. Yeah, some have, yeah, yep. UMass Lowell had me by, this is a few years ago now, yeah, yeah, closer right. to when the book came out, but yeah, they had me by to, to talk to uh, the freshman business students. Okay. Uh, my co-author and I were at Boston College at one point and uh, at Babson uh, to a business school there okay. and um, in Worcester at, uh, at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. I, I talked to a class there last year um, so there is still some interest in, in, in writing the book. You know, it, our, our main audience, I think, is, is everybody. It's yeah, shoppers, it's people in, in Merrimack Valley especially. Right. But it's also to college students because I think anyone who looks at the case of Market Basket can really learn a lot about how a business can operate um, with everybody in mind, not just shareholders. Uh, and customers, too. And customers, because of course. Because they were on yeah. strike more or less, too. They, they? they were. They were, yeah, everybody was. And, and one thing I think people have always loved about this story, of course, it, it came out basically that everybody won, I think, right? It, it came out about as well as it could have for everyone. But it's also the type of story where everyone, practically speaking, had a share in it. If you were a typical market basket shopper, and for the six weeks of that summer when everyone was on strike, and you went to Hannaford or Shaw's or Stop and Shop, you had your own role in 
saving market basket. Right. And there's very few stories, if any, that you would come across where, as a region, you can say, we all kind of had our own small part in this. And that's something I think Even really the vendors well, did. I mean, uh, that's right. the vendors, vendors stopped had, shipping. Yeah. Customers uh, stopped shopping business. there. Yeah, people, uh, if you were in the warehouse, people, people walked out. The warehouse workers were really the ones who walked out first, not knowing if everyone would follow. And I remember, of course, writing it for this, uh, covering this for The Sun. My initial thought when Market Basket workers walked out was, how do they think this is going to work? <laughs> because there, is never, there was never a case before where workers could basically say, we're not coming back until our boss is back. Of course, I'm talking about Arthur T. DeMoss yeah, Arthur when he T. was fired. Not and Arthur they, S. Not Arthur S., yeah. It, it may That's take a while to remember which is which, but yeah, once yeah, you do, exactly. you don't forget. Exactly. And uh, it, there was never a case before where we saw, hey, well, remember, you know, there was no precedent for Market Basket to say, well, this other company, people walked out and they said, we're, gonna, we're not coming back until we get our boss back, and that it actually worked. But what made it work was I think when the customers got involved, not to take any credit away from the people who put their livelihood on the line, but once you saw 90% or more of shoppers immediately right. and practically unanimously go to Market Basket's biggest competitors to prove a point, that was what made Arthur S and that side of this fight eventually, I, I saw it as they had virtually no choice but to give in because Market Basket was headed for the scrap heap with, with the way things were going. They were losing money so badly. Right. What was the company really worth without Arthur T and without all the people, without the shoppers? And the, the vendors weren't and delivering either, so was, the stores were empty. Yeah, it was amazing and, to you see. Know, You'd I mean, go in there, and uh, the produce aisle was empty. <laughs> the bakery was empty. Uh, it, it'd be funny to see. You'd still have a lot of non-perishables, the things that aren't delivered every day. Right. So those would be stocked fully because no one was there to buy it. Right. But then you have the that dichotomy on the other side. You have everything that, you know, the produce that's delivered every day I'm gonna disappeared tell you, very quickly. I'm going to tell you the other side. Uh, Hanover, uh, I live close to Hanover in Chelmsford, right? And that was overburdened. It was, it, there were so many people there. I couldn't wait till uh, Market Basket went back to... Uh, you know, that's okay. right. Yeah, people. Yeah, if you're a, if you're a Hannaford Shaw's stop yeah. and shop, well, I was the uh, closest. Sudden, they, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, it's funny that you. Uh, yeah, you would see, uh, and I triple, would go to the drum. Triple the amount of. People. I'd go by the Drum Hill store just out of curiosity. Yeah, to that's see the how, one I'm talking about. One, yeah. yeah, and it, it, you can find a parking spot. But little did you know, I don't know if you knew this, but they brought in people from New York State. To I work do remember in that. that store, yeah, and they put them up. Yep. In the yeah. local hotel. Yeah, they were used to I being mean, so busy. Uh, and I remember, you know, one of my favorite anecdotes that I've, I've told people at, at talks for the last few years is um, at one point that summer, I was at the Market Basket in Chelmsford on 110, and there was a guy who was on vacation for a while, and he was saying, um, hey, I kind of read something was going on with Market Basket. What, what, I think some of the workers, they were collecting signatures, and he said, what should I do? And they said, uh, Actually, <laughs> it's best for us if you shop elsewhere. And they explained why, that they were looking to prove a point that they weren't going to stand for this as a company without Arthur T. So this guy, just on the, uh, the advice of those market basket the workers, that would, yeah. so, you know, obviously at, on 110, you have stop and shop and, and market basket right across the street right. from each other. So we watched as he got into his car and drove right across the street and went into stop and shop because the market basket workers told him that was what was best for their fight. Mm -hmm. And he, he had not really been following the story he, because he wasn't away that summer. But it was just so funny to see the, um, that loyalty, almost like a blind loyalty, mm -hmm. and that they just sort of felt like, I will do whatever you tell me is best for me to do, mm -hmm. because people felt like they were kind of part of this team right. wanting to stand up for market basket workers. How did you get involved in writing about market basket? Were you assigned the... I was, I was fortunate to be assigned, assigned initially. Yes. So even going back to the previous summer, so we're talking 2013, okay was when Arthur T. first feared he was going to be fired. If you remember back, the Arthur the T. side and the Arthur S. side, yeah, they, right. they, the two sides of the family control the board of directors, and I think the could, majority I, control I, had I, just switched. I think uh, Arthur S. control 50.5%. Yeah, something like that, just over something half, like, yeah. yeah. So Arthur S. got control 
Arthur T. saw the writing on the wall with the bad blood between the two sides of the family. Right. And he came to us at The Sun basically to make a case for himself, talking about all he had done, uh, he and, and his other uh, executives and other managers at Market Basket. Opening sort stores. Of, yeah, opening New stores, stores yeah. Uh, talking about profit sharing and bonuses. and, right. and That's all a that big thing. Do. That bonus was a big thing. Of course. For these kids. Yeah. And it was funny to see, even after the very rough year they had in 2014 with how much money they lost that summer, they still gave out huge bonuses at the, at oh, the end they of the did. year. Yeah. Oh, they did. Yeah. And, um, and, and to, you know, for, for, for me, you know, I, I grew up south of Boston, so my views of Market Basket at that stage were a little bit more of an outs as an outsider. So it gave me a, a, a fresh perspective really right. on, on what right. this company was and what it meant to people. And seeing even at that early stage in 2013, how people came out to fight by the hundreds, by the thousands for Arthur T even back then. Even customers. Even customers, even yeah. I remember work. there was- in, at, in the crowd. In the crowd, yeah. 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 So this first, <laughs> Board meeting that I covered for the Sun was at the uh, the Wyndham Hotel in Andover, right off right, of ninety three. Yeah, I remember that. And I was driving yeah. in and seeing it's kind of like a I think it's River off River Road, and right. there's a long driveway kind of parallel to the highway. Near Andover. And Is it in Andover? I think it's in Andover. Yeah, right, right by the border, and it was just lined with hundreds of Market Basket employees, shoppers, their families, because it was over the summer, so you had a lot of kids there. Right. A lot of homemade shirts, signs. It was like this crazy, almost like festival atmosphere. And I remember the emotion that you couldn't help but feel watching Arthur T being driven through the crowd to go to this board meeting. And people were surrounding him like he was like a prince ahead of the Yeah, I've always state. said it's almost like the Pope. Yeah, yeah, it sounds right? like sacrilege to say, but he's, yeah. he's as popular as a Pope yeah. around here, more so. Yeah. <laughs> so you had Arthur T coming through and people were there, they, a few people, Kind of put it to me as like they were almost like were they holding vigil. Flowers at them? I don't remember yeah. flowers, but they, yeah. Uh, but people, uh, people were uh, people are so fanatical about about him and the company. Mm -hmm. They 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 saw it as if you worked there, especially that Arthur T had always showed so much support for them as employees. They felt like they had to show support for him in right. his time of need. So people showed up by the hundreds, and they were there for. The duration of that entire, remember, it was like a 12-hour meeting the board met that day. And How did you get involved in writing this book? So my co-author, Daniel Korsh, and he's a business professor at Drexel University in Philadelphia, we actually first connected uh, that summer of 2013. Uh, he reached out to me because he was reading a little bit, bit of, about what was going on and right. wanted to sort I think of find out was. more of what was what's going yeah. on behind the scenes, kind of find right. out a little bit more detail that, that wouldn't necessarily make it into a story because uh, he this is in his expertise is is, is business and um, sort of the, the good that businesses can do besides just serving shareholders. And Market Basket is as perfect example as we could get. So, so Daniel and I kept in touch. Uh, I would quote him as an expert on the case, uh, and we kept in touch. And then after 2014, after Arthur T got the company back, mm -hmm. uh, it worked out with Amicom. Our publisher reached out to us actually, and and, and they were interested in, in us doing a book because they saw it as something that people all over the, the country or even all over the world could appreciate, even if you had never heard of Market Basket. It's to think funny. of a company like this, people would say, that's insane, how could this happen? It's funny you say that. I happen to be out of the country and I was watching local news and they were mentioning Market Basket and Arthur T, et cetera. That's right, it's yeah, it was really a national funny. story for a little bit. In, it's a national story. Yeah, I think people just couldn't believe that there was a company that, um, for such a large company, relatively speaking, they have 80 some stores, I think now, and but it's run almost like a little mom and pop, you know, it, where it it's just kind of the family values that people talk I about. Re I can there. remember them delivering to my grandmother's house. They were delivering the groceries to my grandmother's house. Yeah. That's how connected they were. And in a lot of ways, I don't think that's gone away, even as the company has grown no, I agree. To, to such a large size. Well, they have 80 stores now? It's it's quite like, yeah, I lose track. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but it's, it, it's in that range. You know, they're, they're a large company, you know, billions in sales per year, but they still have that feel. I, everyone I remember talking to who worked there, uh, it sounds cliche to call it like a family atmosphere, but people described it as like they all felt like they were the same family. 
Mm-hmm. And so when you had, I think they had a lot of family to, members working at Market Basket or did work at Market Basket or worked there during their college years. And of course, they spread out once they got their degrees and they didn't work at Market Basket, some state, but the majority didn't, but they had that connection. Is that, is that my? You're right. Yeah, yeah. And you think of how many people have worked or shopped there maybe their entire you had life. To wear, or their, you had to wear a tie. Yeah, they look sharp. Yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah. You had to wear a tie. It's, for how much people love working there, no one should get the impression that it's easy. I, I've never no, got the impression it, that it's no, easy to I don't work think there. So. It's disciplined, yeah. but it's a type of atmosphere where if you work hard and you do well, you can, you can rise up. Yeah. And that was what we enjoyed covering too was that a lot of the senior managers who were leading this charge got their start at Market Basket, invariably, in every case, as teenagers, and they just worked their way up because that was what Market Basket's kind of all about. Yeah, I want you to look at this book. We are Market Basket. It's probably on sale, uh, Amazon or whatever. Yeah, it's Christmas season already. Yeah, it's Christmas season. If you're thinking about a book, definitely uh, get this. I mean, it's uh, you know Grant Walker and... Um, uh, definitely pick it up. It's a great read. It's it's pretty easy. It's not you know difficult that you have to yeah, study or a business type of. It's not reading. a textbook or anything like right. that. Yeah, it's something that you can you can pretty easily read if you're a right. shopper or anybody in the area who's interested in reading about business. Yeah, I like I would like to talk about business in Worcester. What's going on sure. in Worcester? You got a sure. new um, baseball team coming from Pawtucket, Rhode pretty Island. Pretty soon, yeah. How did that happen? I mean, I mean, t- sure. they had the property. I understand they're taking. Like 24 properties and demolishing 18 buildings, from what I read. I mean, this they, is serious. They will be business. soon. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell, tell so us Worcester about Badley it. wanted this team. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Pat- the, the Paw Sox have been in Pawtucket, Rhode Island for 40 some years. Right, you're not kidding. McCoy Stadium is getting pretty yeah, old. I don't know if you've been there old, recently. Yeah. It's, it's no, showing I, its I, age. I, I was there once and it was old then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the team made some efforts to first to go to Providence. That didn't right. work out. And then they looked at a location nearby in, in Pawtucket. And in the end, Worcester offered a lot more money. Uh, the and city property, just. And acreage. Right, right, yeah, right near downtown, yeah. not too far from Route 290. And so it's pretty it's, easy to get up on 290, uh, you know, if I go to a baseball game. It is, yeah. If yeah. you're coming from, from Chelmsford, from yeah. the Lowell area, go down 495 to 290, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty easy. Right. And it's a triple A uh, affiliate, which means that they are gonna, that's the next step to Major League Baseball. Yeah, there's so a it's top, pretty big. top step until you get to yeah, Fenway. Yeah, it's pretty right. big. I mean, I don't think there are any triple A affiliates in the area. It's usually double or single A. So, right, like the um, spinners are single A. Yeah, yeah, single A short season. Yeah, I think they're the only Triple A team in yeah, New England. Exactly. And obviously, having the Red Sox name and being an affiliate of the Red Sox is is a huge catch. So, are you going to invite me down the opening day? In, in, sure. In twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Yeah, we'll right. be there. So I I understand they're going to start um, in um, next July. Yeah, they're uh, they're moving quick. Yeah, they want to start construction next summer, yeah. not just on the ballpark, but on the Related development, more than $100 million worth of mixed-use development is supposed to go up across the street from the park, help pay for the stadium, because the city has uh, borrowed $101 million wow. for this process, for this project. So are they taking buildings in eminent domain? Uh, that's not the plan. They, they don't want to take it by eminent domain. Uh, they hope to... to to buy, buy them, up. right, from from different landowners, and yes, right, some will be knocked down. A lot of it is um, parking lot or uh, brown brownfield, you know, uh, oh. like a contaminated former oh. industrial site that's been undeveloped for a very long time. I see. And the city has really been eyeing this as a as a big potential development site. It's close to downtown, close to the highway, so close to Union Station. There will be two hotels that are. And you have a college there. Interns working there? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if there's plans specifically for, for college students, but yeah. you do have the colleges all nearby. Yeah. And I, I think that that was part of the reason they, they see um, from the city's perspective, but also maybe the teams is sort of is, is building off, off the colleges a, there as a, sort of another thing for not just families, but also college students to do. 290 is a so. tough route because everybody who comes from Maine, or Canada, they go down 495 onto to 290 to, to get to right. the turnpike 
to go south it can certainly or back go up. west. That's right. And you're going to have major problems like Leicester, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> that could be, yeah. You're going to well, have a, a lot, lot of, of traffic. So now when I travel, I have to have a schedule to make sure there's no baseball game the day I travel going, going through to New York or where I'm going, yeah. Pennsylvania, to go through Worcester. Or else I'll have to go down 495 and pick up the turnpike there. Yeah, and in go, Westboro and, and over there. Yeah, yeah that's west. right. I mean, it's just, that's the reality of it. I mean, you know. Yeah. But we have, do we have a name yet? or? or? Not technically. I, I think it'll be the Worcester Red Sox. Oh, the Worcester uh, the, Red Sox. The team is the having. Sox, what, the Woo Sox. The Woo Sox, yeah, yeah, it might be the nickname, yeah. yeah. Uh, they are having a contest to see what potential names, but okay. I, I bet it sticks with the Worcester Red Sox. All right, so I could go online. So the, na the name of it's going to be a, a Polar? Polar Park, Park, yeah, Polar Beverages. Beverage, yeah. Yeah, about the naming rights. Drink more Polar Beverages. So uh, Yeah, Polar Seltzer. Yeah, seltzer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we love it. Water, yeah, Polar Seltzer, <laughs> yeah. A, a lime, grape, whatever. Yeah, and it kind of works out. The name won't be Paw Sox, but the, you know, the Paw Sox logo is the bear. Yeah, right, and, exactly. Yeah, the Polar Bear, so yeah. it works out well in that way. But, um, yeah, Polar is a so very well-known Worcester live, company. Do you live in Worcester? Or? We do. Yeah, my oh, wife and I live right oh, in Worcester. Yep. So that's going to be where you're going to stay? or Sure, yeah. yeah. You yeah. Like, we have a house there. You like yeah, the job? Oh, yeah, good. All yep. right, yeah. Oh, so, you, so you'll be at the games? Uh, yeah, 2021, once they 2021. come. Yeah. yeah it seems back. like a long time away, but it, it'll go fast. Yeah, no, we'll go fast. I mean, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. And uh, so you're going to be on this. I mean, so uh, 2021, yeah. we'll have you come up and talk about Sure, I'd be Maybe happy to. There's break. a lot to cover for that, too. There's, uh, it's a huge investment by the no, city. No doubt about it. I could see a hotel in center field where you could be in your room and your bed's face in the field. And they you could, could, yeah. Watch. They, 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 the, the part of the plan is uh, they have like a green monster like set up. Okay. And beyond the left field wall, you have a hotel that would be up there. Oh, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, it's great. I mean, why not? I mean, where are you going to put the visiting teams, you know? There you go. Uh, especially AAA teams. They're not going to go to uh, dormitories in, in, no. uh, in uh, Holy Cross or anything like that. They're not going to do that. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely going to be a AAA hotel with, with the visiting team. Now, I don't yeah. know where the, the home team would be staying, but, you know, uh, but yeah, the players, I conceivably, would be living probably apartments nearby. Yeah, I I, think. yeah, probably triple yeah. A. I don't know how much they make, but it's a substantial more than single A. Uh, I would think so. Yeah. yeah. How far is it yeah. from your home, by the way? Ten minutes. Oh, that's that's good. Yeah. So, so you like your new job being the uh, news editor of the Worcester Business Journal? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yep. Yeah. I, how uh, many I people cool. work in there? We have about twenty-five or so. Oh, that many. Yeah. And, it's a, and what do they they report on business? So we cover yeah business in, in Worcester. We go up to Fitchburg and Lemonster, yeah, out to Framingham and Natick. There's a connection with Fitch, Fitchburg and Lemonster with Worcester where there's not one from Lowell. There's no connection yeah. to go to Worcester, but but Fitchburg. Yeah, you have Route 190 that connects yeah, them. It's, it's yeah, fairly easy to get between the, those two regions. I, I, I knew the uh, state senator who got that going. Because they always wanted the north mm. south route to Worcester for Fitchburg, because mm. there was a connection. So, the, and that's how we driven on. You go on 190, it's like, no one. That's pretty easy. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I take that home and swing down Route 2 and take 495. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's easy that way. Listen, um, Grant is a, is a writer of We Are Market Basket. Grant Welker. And I want you to buy this book for Christmas. Um, it's a great read. And uh, he's also an author. That's why, uh, besides a news editor. Yeah. You know? So thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. I thank it very you for having much, me. You know? uh, anything real quick you want to say in regards to? Uh, Lowell or Oh Worcester. boy, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I do see. You know, I covered Lowell for a few years, yeah, uh, and yeah. you do see a lot of similarities between the gateway cities: uh, Lowell, Lawrence, oh. Worcester, Fitchburg. So they all no have. Problem. Yeah, they, they, they all have all, uh, uh, some of the same challenges, but also a lot going for them in terms of 